Hi everyone, welcome to episode 7 of the Talking Money with Nozi podcast. I'm your host Nozi and today I'm going to be talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, Investing 101. Please remember that the information shared here is for educational and entertainment purposes only. This podcast should not be considered financial advice. Please consult with a certified financial planner before making any major financial decisions. Now back to today's episode. So what exactly is investing? Well, think of investing as planting seeds with the hope of growing a huge baobab tree. Baobab trees take about 15 to 20 years to reach maturity. When you invest, you're putting your money into something with the expectation that it will grow over a long time. Now, let me clear up a misconception. Saving is not the same as investing, even though people like to use these words interchangeably. Saving is about setting money aside, usually in the bank, for short-term needs like emergencies or saving a deposit to buy a car or a house, for example. Investing, on the other hand, is about putting your money into assets that will make your money work harder for you over the long term. Many people are afraid of investing and prefer saving because saving seems safe and steady. But here is what most people don't realize. Saving alone will just not cut it in the long run. Why? Because of inflation. What is inflation? Simply put, inflation is the rise in the prices of goods and services. As the prices of goods and services rise, the buying power of your money decreases. For example, I have a picture of a 1980 newspaper with the following prices for grocery items. Four pack Carlton's toilet paper was 1 rand 29 cents. Doom spray was 1 rand 89 cents. Tennis biscuits were 79 cents. 2 kg tastic rice was 3 rand and 25 cents. A box of Kellogg's all bran flakes was 1 rand 19 cents. These prices sound ridiculously low, right? It's unbelievable. It's funny. Most people laugh when I tell them. This means that in 1980, 500 rand was a lot of money. But if in 1980, your mom had taken that 500 rand and saved it in the bank as her quote unquote investment for her future, today, 44 years later, 500 rand cannot even fill a shopping basket. Yet back in the 80s, it could fill two trolleys with lots of spare change. So while saving money may feel safe and secure in the short term, it fails to keep pace with inflation in the long run. That's why saving is not good enough over the long term, because over time, inflation reduces the purchasing power of your savings. This means what you can buy today will cost much more money in the future. And if you just park your money in the bank, you will not be able to afford the cost of living in the future. In order to keep up with the cost of living in the future, your money must grow faster than the rate of inflation. This is where investing comes in. Investing is for the long term and it is all about maintaining the purchasing power of your money and building wealth over time. When it comes to investing, you must look beyond immediate gratification and focus on securing a brighter financial future for yourself and your loved ones. You will never be a successful investor if you have a short-term mindset looking for quick gains. As I said in the beginning, think of investing as planting seeds with the hope of growing a huge baobab tree. Baobab trees take about 15 to 20 years to reach maturity that's a very long time. It's not a few months or a few weeks or a few years. By putting your money into assets like shares or property or bonds, you give it the opportunity to grow and outpace inflation. When it comes to investing, there is no one size fits all approach. There are many different options. You can buy assets like shares, property, or bonds or a mixture of these three things to give your money an opportunity to grow and outpace inflation over the long term. Each type of investment offers its own unique benefits and risks. Shares, also called stocks or equities, represent ownership in a company. Investing in shares gives you the opportunity to participate in the company's growth and profitability. It's like owning a piece of the pie. 
and enjoying the rewards as it grows. As part owner of a company, you can benefit from dividend payments and capital appreciation as the company grows. It's like riding the wave of success alongside the businesses that you believe in. However, shares also come with risks. The stock market can be volatile, with prices fluctuating based on market sentiment, economic conditions, and company performance. Investing in shares requires patience, resilience, and a tolerance for risk. Property investment, on the other hand, involves purchasing real estate with the aim of generating rental income or capital appreciation. Owning property can provide a steady stream of passive income and serve as a hedge against inflation. It's like building a solid foundation for your financial future brick by brick. Property investment has its own risks as well. Property prices can be influenced by factors like economic conditions, location, and property market trends. Also, being a landlord comes with a lot of responsibility, like maintenance costs, tenant management, and market fluctuations. Bonds, meanwhile, are like loans that you give to governments or corporations. In return, you receive regular interest payments and the promise of repayment of your initial capital at maturity. It's like being the lender instead of being the borrower. Bonds offer fixed income payments, making them a reliable source of income for investors. Bonds are very steady and they provide predictability in your investment portfolio. However, you guessed it, bonds also carry risks. The value of bonds can fluctuate based on the changes in interest rates, credit ratings, and economic conditions. Also, inflation can erode the purchasing power of bond returns over time, especially if bond interest rates fail to keep up with inflation. Now, here's the thing. There's no right or wrong way to invest. It all comes down to your personal preferences and financial goals. For me, I prefer investing in shares because it's easy and cheap to get started. And also historically, the returns from the stock market have been higher than those from property and bonds. So whether you're considering shares, property or bonds, it's important to weigh the benefits and risks carefully. Diversification across shares, property and bonds can help minimize your risk and optimize your returns in your investment portfolio. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today's episode of Investing 101. But this investing topic doesn't end here. There's so much to cover. In upcoming episodes, we're going to dive even deeper into this exciting topic of investing. I'm going to uncover more strategies, insights and tips to help you to achieve your financial goals. If you found today's episode valuable, don't forget to share it with your friends, family, and colleagues. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button to stay updated on my latest episodes. Do you have burning questions or topics that you want me to cover? I would love to hear from you. WhatsApp your questions to 072-586-2827. Please mention that it's for my podcast and I will address your questions in future episodes. Thanks for tuning in to the Talking Money with Nozi podcast. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and keep investing in your future.